In this talk, we present a content-aware unsupervised deep homography estimation approach. This work was completed by Jirong Zhang et al. in the UESTC and MEGV technology. Our code is available at the GitHub link. Traditional homography estimation methods require to match image feature points explicitly. Then a ransack outlier rejection step is conducted to maximize the matching rate for the feature points. If the ransack fails or the scene provides low quality features, the homography will be estimated with error. Recently there have been two typical DNN-based solutions, supervised and unsupervised methods. However, they have some problems, such as synthetic data for supervised training, and photometric loss for unsupervised training. In this work, we present our method, an unsupervised approach which requires no ground truth homography and automatically learns a feature for the loss evaluation. The results by our method are of higher quality compared previous approaches. Let's look at the results of all of them side by side here. So, simply speaking, the contribution of our method are threefolds. 1. We propose a novel network structure that enables content-aware robust homography estimation. 2. We propose a triplet loss that is designed for unsupervised training. 3 a new dataset which covers various scenes for unsupervised training. Here is our network structure. Given two input gray images IA and IB, two modules extract the features of them and learn a mask from them, so that we get the feature maps FA and FB, as well as the masks MA and MB. We multiply F and M so as to get GA and GB. We concatenate GA and GB and then feed them into a module of homography estimator. Here we use ResNet34 as the backbone. Finally we get 8 numbers to further compute a homography matrix HAB. If we use equations to express the aforementioned process, we can get the following equations. Here F, M, and H, are the three modules. To enable the unsupervised training, we design a triplet loss. To facilitate the alignment between IA and IB, we need to minimize the difference between IB and the warped version of IA. First, we calculate feature maps FA and FB, which are normalized by the learned mask MA and MB, yielding normalized L1 loss between FA prime and FB. Second, we define a L1 loss between the original FA and FB. The idea here is that if we directly minimize the loss LN, a trivial solution that FA and FB equal to zero could be learned. After we add this new loss L, we need to maximize the difference between them. So our total loss could be expressed as here. In practice, we swap IA and IB and add a regularization term. We also propose a data set that covers five different scenes. They are regular, low texture, low light, small foreground and large foreground. We also manually match several points in the paired images as the ground truth for evaluations. For the experimental parts, we first compare our method with the two existing DNN-based solutions. In this chart, we show the error in the five scenes. As seen in the chart, our method has a minimal error compared with others. Now we show some image examples. In the first row, we see that, as the supervised method heavily relies on the ground truth homography, it fails when applied to the real images. In the second row, if the two images are of different luminance, the photometric error used by Nguyen's unsupervised method will fail. In comparison, our method can well handle the two cases. Let's focus more on the comparison between Nguyen's solution and ours. In regular category, as there are rich textures in the images, 
our performance is similar to that by Nguyen's method, with a little more stable quality. However, in the low texture category, with the texture is becoming less and less. Nguyen's method becomes unstable and error prone as the photometric loss cannot correctly guide the alignment. Also, in this snow scenes, the photometric loss over the entire image plane is also unaccountable so that Nguyen's method fails. In this dynamic scene, photometric loss over the entire image is absolutely inaccurate which causes Nguyen's method fails. In comparison, our method calculate the loss on the masked area, which produces more stable results. If the moving object become larger, Nguyen's method fails more severely. For example, in the two examples, the Nguyen's method cannot find what to base on for alignment. In comparison, our method automatically removes the foreground and align the background robustly. We further compare our method with the traditional methods. Here, we select four features as the descriptors. We also choose RANSAC and MAGSAC as the outlier rejection methods. So totally we get eight combinations. This chart reveals that, our method achieves the smallest error compared to other methods. We also show some challenging examples here. In this example, the close performance to ours is by the LIFT plus RANSAC or MAGSAC method. However, they have an obvious horizontal translation. Not to mention the other traditional ones, they obviously fail in this case. The similar phenomenon also applies in the following examples. In this example, only our method can align the tracing rut and the building. The same phenomenon applies in this example. In this example, when the scene contains rich textures, all the methods can produce good results. However, when the scenes get darker, our method is still stable while the others fail. In this example, the foreground fountain occupies a large portion of images, causing the difficulties for outlier rejection methods, such as RANSAC and MAGSAC. In contrast, our method can align the background building successfully. At last, we list all the quantitative evaluations here. Table shows the errors where our method achieves the lowest error in average, and for all the scenes except for the regular ones. Even for the regular scene, our results are also comparable. We also set a threshold of 3 pixels to determine whether a point pair is matched or not, so that we get the inlier percentage shown in the table. This values reflect the robustness of our method. As seen, our method is still the robustest compared with others. At the end of this talk, we would like to show the failure cases of our method. As told, our method is only designed for small baseline scenes. For the large baseline scenes, our network loses its power for alignment because the receptive field is of limited size. In this case, the traditional method still works. We will leave the large baseline solution as a future work. So in this talk, we presented our ECCV work, a new unsupervised homography estimation approach. It involves two parts, including a new network structure, a novel triplet loss designed for the unsupervised training, and a new data set covering different scenes for alignment evaluation. Our method achieves the superior performance compared with the state-of-the-art methods. We hope our method could further inspire more works in the research community. 
Thank you.